Hey, I'm uh, Maria from uh, Umus Vivo and I'm here at Critical Concrete. They have this really nice hot compost. Um, you can check it out on uh, their YouTube channel. And if you don't have the space they have uh, to put a hot compost, then you can come with me and learn how to make a warm compost that you can store in your kitchen. This is the tiny, tiny prototype that we've done before. Um, but actually what we are together going through today is making this into this size. And then you can stack it up. When you are cooking all the veggie stuff, please don't put any animal products except for the eggshells. But all the veggie stuff, you just cut it up um, after you, you are uh, done at uh, cooking and you add it in the pot or in whatever device you decide to make on your own and then you have these worms that are super happy to basically eat up your food and shit it. So then what they shit is your hummus and your lovely compost. You can add it into your flowers, your tomatoes, your lettuces, you can have rucola, you can have these yummy yummy veggies all grown by your own food waste. When we want to learn how to make a compost, the first place we should look at is the forest ground actually. That's where it happens naturally, that's where it uh, throughout the seasons and throughout the entire forest ground, the leaves fall, the animals go in, they eat it up and compost happens. First thing is good aeration. In the forest ground there's nothing like uh, super smashed up and uh, like this without being able to breathe. We want to promote aerobic bacteria and so we need to dig a bunch of holes in this. <laughs> Actually, in a smaller pot like this, just the holes on the bottom are enough because, you know, the height is not so much and the, the air can still pass on. But in a bucket like this, we should do the size, side holes as well. Everything in the world that you compost is made up by two things, either carbon or nitrogen. Uh, actually, from the two um, and usually the elements that have more carbon it's the brown ones and like cardboard like sawdust like uh, everything that is brown the dry leaves and these are the components in your system that will take the longest time to decompose and then you have your green stuff like the leaves and the uh, leftovers of food and these kind of things and that is very fast to decompose but it's and it's mostly nitrogen all materials are made up with uh, carbon and nitrogen some more carbon some more nitrogen and you want to have a good balance in your own system you need a soft uh, base that is able to decompose not as fast as the rest of the pot. So we add a lot of carbon. These can be either toilet paper rolls, it can be cardboard boxes, it can be newspaper. The only thing you need to remember like plastic and uh, chemical paints are not natural, so don't put them in your compost. We need something that holds down the water that might escape and actually that is very good fertilizer for the plants liquid fertilizer so basically we need to put our pot in a place <laughs> remember humidity we want it in our system so we cannot just put the cardboard super dry because it actually ca cardboard absorbs a lot of water uh, so we have to add that basically we you want a nice layer that will take time to decompose and that uh, basically protects your worms from the bottom layer. Actually, you can buy your worms online, but if you don't want to do that, you can always go outside and just dig a bit in the soil. Usually where there's nettles, it's a very good indicator of worms underneath. When you add in your worms, 
you need to make sure that you are giving it food so bring some soil of the place you dig them out and give it some grounded coffee beans they love it give some cardboard so you have the ratio of nitrogen and uh, carbon remember they will sit here for a few weeks until they have babies reproduce and when there is so many worms that you cannot see anything else then you start feeding it little by little you increase the amount of food so again wet some cardboard some this is just uh, paper so we wet it and we put it on top and this way we can keep the humidity inside so we took care of humidity we took care of air we took care of carbon nitrogen ratio we need to take care of sunlight worms they really don't like sunlight you only see them outside when it's raining a lot and they need to come out for air so on top of all of this system we need to cover it with a breathable fabric because you need to breathe but we need to cover it so there's no sunlight you can cover it with a cotton a linen this is a geotextile because it's what critical concrete has in its uh, workshop where we are and it works fine as well so this is actually our prototype, first level of prototype uh, of worm composting. You just, when your worms multiply, you open it from when you finish cooking, you take the top layer, you add in your kitchen scraps, you let the worms have fun, you cover again, and you keep them nice and protected and safe at their beautiful home. For example, where compost is super good is in uh, projects like this where you dig out the concrete and three months after you have this wonderful life over here that is promoted by lots of biodiversity, by the microorganisms present in the compost and by all the activity that we are uh, doing creating so much diverse life. The great thing about this system is that you are putting food in this level, the worms are eating and they start to produce hummus underneath. It's already all cooked out. So when you want to make, when this is full of kitchen scraps, you can just put a plate with a lot of holes on top of it so that the worms can pass through and you put the exact same pot just on top and you start filling with kitchen scraps on top of that one, the worms will go through and start eating there. When all of the worms pass on, you have a nice pot of hummus. I hope you enjoyed and uh, you learned something, you are motivated to do your own combos at home and uh, feel free to check out my Instagram page, Humus Vivo, and uh, give a follow and Contact me for any questions.